Hello, welcome to Talking Europe, the European program co-produced by France 24 and Radio France International. I'm Christophe Robit from France 24 and I'm glad to be joined by my colleague from RFI, Sarah Elzas. And our guest today is Arlem Désir. He's a longtime activist with the French Socialist Party, currently serving his third term as a member of the European Parliament with the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats. Now, back in the 80s and 90s, he was a leader of the French anti-racist group SOS Racisme. These days, as a European politician, he's focused on globalization issues and the economy. We'll, of course, ask him about the situation in Greece and fears about the euro. Arlem Désir, welcome. Thank you. Let's start with what's been in the news these days. A, a few days ago, the European Parliament voted against uh, renewing an agreement with the United States to share banking data. This is the, the SWIFT agreement. Um, how did you vote on this in the Parliament? Well, I voted against this agreement as the majority of the Parliament. I think we need, of course, cooperation between the United States and the European Union to fight terrorism, and the Parliament has already supported a lot of uh, uh, specific uh, agreement on this. But here, there is a balance to find between uh, uh, the fight against terrorism and, and the security needs and uh, the protection of personal data, personal privacy, uh, liberty, and it was not uh, unsure. So that even uh, the Commission and the Council told us uh, this will be like a transition, uh, transitional agreement. We will bring more uh, guarantee and, and, uh, and protection uh, later, the Parliament has asked, uh, to have the guarantee before the support of this agreement. So there will be a renegotiation. And I think also we must look at the reciprocity. Frankly speaking, I don't imagine the US Congress would have accepted such an agreement asked by the European Union to access to all the banking data of all the US citizens without more guarantee. So you don't agree with those in Brussels who say blocking the bill was a way for the parliament to reassert its new powers? It was also a way for the parliament to say to the, co the Commission and the Council Hey guys, look, you can't negotiate this kind of agreement which have a, a, a consequence on the uh, internal legislation of the protection of uh, f liberty of our citizens without the agreement of this institution, the European Parliament, which represents the uh, European citizen. There's a lot more power in the Parliament. The EU Commission was confirmed uh, two weeks ago. Um, the, you and other French socialists uh, vehemently blocked the confirmation of José Manuel Barroso's new commission. Uh, what did you have against them? Yes, like uh, the Greens in the Parliament, like others, uh, who are very European, but very disappointed by this uh, commission. For example, one of the new posts in this uh, executive, in this uh, new EU uh, leadership, is uh, the high representative for external action. We, we used to call it the Minister for Foreign Affairs. And Referring the, to uh, Lady Ashton. Yes. Uh, well, I, I think Lady Ashton is, is a wonderful woman, but she was not prepared at all. To, to have this function. And uh, I think that the role of the Parliament is to, to say we need a, a vision, we need a, a, an impulsion, we, we need a, a strong executive in this time of crisis, and in this time also of crisis of confidence between the citizen of European Union and the European project. And so I think that uh, for this reason, because it's a very weak uh, commission, also because of uh, a lack of uh, strong commitment on some very important issue like uh, the, the social model of Europe, uh, the need to build a strong economy with industrial uh, vision, for example, uh, the need to have a, a clear vision of what will be our action in the globalization in terms of promoting uh, more regulation in the banking system, uh, in the uh, trade system, to, to balance it with the uh, uh, objective of uh, environment and, and uh, sustainable development. For all those reasons, for me, it was a sign, a, a message sent to this commission to say we need more clarification. Well, let's now talk about Greece. The country's public finances are in an appalling condition which has alarmed the rest of the EU, as this could potentially bring down the euro. Now, European leaders have been trying to figure out how to deal with the fallout. We want to ask you, Mr. Desir, of course, what you think about their response. But first, let's... Uh, have a look and a listen at a report from uh, Karim Yawawi and Karia, Karla Westerheide. Behind the smile, a prime minister under pressure. George Papandreou came to discuss Greece's debt crisis at the European Council. 
Angela Merkel, Nicolas Sarkozy and European President Hermann von Rompuy all called for the implementation of austerity measures. A rather ambitious bailout plan, but Papandreou says it's the only way forward. It's a step showing the credibility both of Greece in having the absolute political will to, to apply and to, to, uh, to implement the so-called uh, stability and growth program, which will bring us back into a, uh, a stabilizing uh, uh, economy, stabilized economy and cutting down our deficit by 4 percent, but also on a growth path uh, and, uh, and one of, 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 uh, of social cohesion. But there's great mistrust. EU countries have not forgotten that Greece falsified its public finance data to ensure EU membership in 2001. They will now keep a close eye on Athens. Greece is a member of the European Union and we will help. But there are rules and these rules will have to be respected. The Greek Prime Minister said he appreciated the EU's support but underlined that it came last minute because of disagreement among the 27 member states. Papandreou will now have to implement the austerity measures, which include a freeze on wages for public sector workers, pension reforms, tax increases and a rise in fuel prices. Because of Greece's downturn, the euro has lost 4.5 percent in value since the beginning of the year. Member states also worry about Spain and Portugal, two EU countries experiencing increasing financial difficulties. Alem Desir, do you think that Europe's response is appropriate? Uh, we heard in this report there's still fear that countries like Spain and Italy could follow suit. Well, I think uh, there was an expression of solidarity, but frankly speaking, the action is still lacking. First, we need to fight against those, uh, institu this, those financial institutions and banks who have uh, tried to speculate on the, the Greece debt. And there is uh, now an inquiry, a demand by Angela Merkel and uh, Olli Rehn, to look at the specific action of some US bank. Uh, uh, and, and frankly speaking, it looks like if Goldman Sachs has helped Greece in the past to hide a part of its debt and then has speculated with hedge funds on the variation of the, the level of this debt. So we need, for example, an hedge fund on taxation and banks of the bank system to take very serious uh, action now. We have uh, helped those banks uh, when they were uh, directly threatened by the crisis, mm -hmm. and then they can go back to uh, distribution of, uh, of bonus, uh, to speculation. The lessons without... haven't been learned, you are saying? Yes, absolutely. Second, of course, there is a need to respect the rules, and, and there are some reforms to be done in the uh, public finance of the, of the Greece system. But there is also a need of solidarity. I mean, if the response is to kill the patient because uh, you compress the social system, the, the wages, the number of civil servants, then what is the mean of European solidarity and where is the economic answer? And, and it is not only a problem for Greece. I think that there has been also a lack of a coordinated uh, 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 fiscal uh, impulsion to answer to the crisis. If you, compare, if you compare the reaction of European Union to the one of US or China in front of crisis, there has not been a real uh, uh, fiscal impulse uh, for, for a relaunch of the growth. And if we want to have a, a more balanced finan public finance in the future, the first answer is to have growth. So one of the concerns was the, of Italy and Spain and the other economies. Maybe this happening the same. On Friday, our Brussels correspondent Katia Lin Landaburu spoke with Antonio uh, Tajani. He's a vice president of the commission. He holds a key portfolio, industry and entrepreneurship. He says Spain and his country, Italy, are not at all like Greece. Uh, let's hear what he has to say. I think the Greek situation is very different from that of Spain, Portugal, or even Italy. I think the real problem today is Greece. All other countries have followed European rules. There are rules for growth and development. We have always defended them, and we need to tell all members to respect them. They must always tell us the truth. Unfortunately, there were some problems with Greece. 
avec la Grèce. Aujourd'hui, il faut absolument Today, aider la Grèce. Greece, il faut aider la Grèce, Greece accompagner la Grèce dans, promised, dans les réformes qu'elle a promis so de faire that succeed, pour gagner tous ensemble. Parce que le the défi Greek de la Grèce, c'est le défi de tous. Us, euh, donc, moi, je suis optimiste. Je pense qu'il n'y aura pas de problèmes comme en Grèce, ni en Espagne, ni en Portugal, ni en Italie, ni dans les autres pays. Je pense que la Grèce est différente des autres pays parce qu'elle a cheaté. There is specificity of the Greece situation because there has been some falsification in, in the public uh, budget. But uh, there is other uh, member states of European Union who have the same level of, uh, of debt, including, for example, UK. And nobody thinks that UK will not be able to, uh, to, to reimburse. So Greece will not be failing. That's not true. But there is a, a, a lack of solidarity Uh, which is uh, interpreted by uh, the financial market as a possibility uh, of a crisis, of perhaps uh, some of the member states saying uh, Greece could leave Eurozone and so on. So first we must uh, say that the solidarity with, will be serious. We must demonstrate this solidarity, not only say to Greece, uh, you must go back to the rules and then there will be some solidarity. There has been a declaration of uh, Mr. Juncker, the Prime Minister of Luxembourg, who is also the head of what is called the Eurogroup, uh, who says uh, everybody has to help himself. I, I was rather shocked by this declaration. I, I think Mr. Juncker is very pro-European, but if the only message of the coordination of European member states, when there is uh, a, a member state in difficulty, is to say you have to respect the rules, even if it means that uh, you will uh, destroy your society, uh, I, I think But it is not a, a good answer. Mr. Lezzi, aren't the Greeks now being punished for, at the time, having falsified falsified some of their statistics. That's what we're hearing in Brussels and analysis. Do you agree? Uh, you may agree or disagree and say it is wrong, but the feeling is that a lot of pressure is being put on Mr. Papandreou to now clean his house in Greece and, and maybe pay for the mistakes of the previous governments. Yes, Mr. Papandreou is the Prime Minister since a very few months and he inherits a situation which he tried to correct. The, the, the Greek citizens are not responsible for the failing of their private, uh, uh, previous uh, government. So I think if we think uh, th in that direction, we will just promote extremist, populist, anti-European feeling in European Union. If every time a country has a difficulty, the, the meaning of the European Uh, action messages is to say you will be punished because you have not respect this sure. pact, these rules, this, uh, this competition uh, uh, directive. I think it, it, it's crazy. Europe is about solidarity, is about facing together mm -hmm. uh, the challenges of the new global uh, world. And one of these challenges is uh, the fact that financial markets are, are playing against the, the currency and the state, is that we have to confront with uh, emergent country who have a, a very strong ambition, and it's good, but so we need to defend our own economy, our own industry, for example, in car industry. And if Europe is, is only about help yourself and respect the rules, I think we will destroy the European feeling. Well, and also you, you have trouble with the, with the euro and the eurozone itself. So you do need to, I mean, do you think that there needs to be an overseeing body of, of the euro and the eurozone? Or is it really just need to be an attitude shift in the country? Yes, the Eurozone has a problem because it has a central bank which is in charge of the stability of yeah. the price, but we don't have the economic government who, mm -hmm. who is in charge of uh, the economic strategy, of the growth strategy, of the uh, uh, change uh, rate. Uh, so we don't uh, have the mechanisms to face uh, such crises. Yes, It's we have one leg. Uh, and if we want to go straight forward, we need two legs uh, and we need a political direction of this Eurozone. Mm -hmm. I mean, neither United States or uh, China or India or Brazil are just uh, uh, coordinated by a bank, by a central bank. Yeah. They are coordinated by do, a government with a political will. will. This, will this will to implement a so-called economic governance. We've seen Angela Merkel, the German chancellor, uh, very often uh, discussing the issue recently with uh, President Sarkozy of France. Do you think the crisis has raised the alarm. Europe needs clear mechanisms to take care of the Eurozone. On the one hand, it, it's a, a progress to hear Angela Merkel uh, speaking about uh, economic governance. But on the other hand, I think that behind this new language, 
uh, it's only the old conception of just the respect of the rules of the, the, the growth and the stability pact. But it's not enough because this pact is not including a real priority for growth, for economic development. And this is only at the level of national government. So Angela Merkel has an industrial national strategy for the German industry, Nicolas Sarkozy for the French industry, but there is not a common strategy. And there is not a common strategy for growth in Europe. For example, there has not been a, a, a stimulus plan uh, in front of crisis at European level. Mm -hmm. There has been sure. an addition of national plan which were very different one from the other. Mm -hmm. And quickly, very quickly, going from the, the European to the local, there are local regional elections coming up uh, here in France in March. Um, the socialists are polling pretty high. Uh, what, are you, what are you thinking? What are the outlooks? Well, I think, yes, we have very high expectation for the result of this regional election because in most of the region, uh, the president of the region are from the Socialist Party and they have, I think, very good uh, result in their action. It is appreciated by the citizen and because also citizens want to have region which protect them in terms of social policy uh, and so on, in front of the policy of the government of Very Mr. Briefly, Sarkozy. Will this be a referendum on the policies of Mr. Sarkozy? No, it will be first uh, uh, an election and a referendum on the action of the local regional government. But, of course, if uh, it is a defeat for Mr. Sarkozy's uh, party, it will be a sign of disappointment of uh, a lot of French people towards this policy. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it from us here. We're running out of time, unfortunately. Arlem Desir, thank you so much for being our guest thank today you. on Talking Europe. Thank you, Sarah, from Radio France International. Thank you for watching this edition of Talking Europe. Please stay tuned. The news coming up.